with you. I appreciate very much the kind invitation of Professor Dr. James Weiger to be here in this colloquium in order to celebrate the 50th birthday of my dear friend, Professor Dr. Harald Rieferdinger. Many people, colleagues, students, and especially my own ones, have asked me to talk about mathematics and mathematicians, and particularly my task in this discipline. I reciprocate the request hoping that this information will help you understand both mathematics and mathematicians, and in particular to understand some of the areas of mathematics to which I have dedicated my life. So, what I will tell you today is the story of my, of my mathematical life. At this conference, due to the heterogeneity of the audience, I have tried to give something for everyone. <coughs> that is, I will discuss concepts of various levels. My apologies to those who want to see a long series of theorems, and also my apologies to those who prefer not to see a long series of theorems. I have tried, except in some specific cases, to use common words, which by the way is very difficult, you know, to do for an mathematician, in order to describe some of the general ideas to offer a panoramic aspect about what I have to tell you. Mathematics has enormous applicability and is an essential language and framework for all science. This is the reason why not only a few individuals devote their lives to it, but is studied in the educational system and part of the social scene. Perhaps mathematical research is the farthest activity from the man in the street who do not have absolutely any idea about this scientific discipline. Mathematics is usually identified by him with the ideas that could hardly absorb, often unsuccessfully, in elementary school. Mathematics, or what he thinks it is, looks cold and raw, without uh, life. He even speaks about the coldness of the numbers. Hardly has he imagined that mathematics was created in the past and is, is still created at present by some humans. It is very difficult to understand the fact that it is an abstract intellectual discipline that possesses an independent and prosperous existence. One way to establish contact with it is through lectures like this one or through knowing and listening mathematicians working in various disciplines of science that use mathematics. At this lecture, I will discuss mainly issues related to mathematics and its creators. The first characteristic that mathematics has is, very is that it is very difficult to describe or define its subject matter. Maybe it is easier to grasp what the subject matter of some areas of study of astronomy or biology, but certainly it is not of algebraic K theory. This is mainly because the objects of study are defined in the abstract concepts which are often chained to other previously <coughs> defined ones. The description is reduced to formal definitions that require neural connections which require time to take place. This, coupled with a mathematical maturity or mathematical training, allows the human being to assimilate a lot of abstract, abstract ideas. For example, if you try to explain to your inquisitive little niece what the addition is, or what analytical geometry is, or what is a ring, you will require, after many intuitive explanations and formal definitions, time. Lots of time. The second characteristic is that it has a perfect logic. Euclid mathematics is as valid today as in the time of Euclid. This contrasts with other theories, such as the flat air, or the frontiston, or the uh, ether theories. Mm. The third characteristic is the conclusiveness of mathematics.
matrix. That is, different disciplines make conclusions based on mathematical manipulations. The fourth characteristic is that it is independence. Uh, it does not require expensive equipment, unlike the experimental sciences. Sometimes just a pencil and paper, or not even this. Archimedes drew in the sand. Leray wrote his mathematics as a prisoner of war. Despite the political regimes, regimes of all kinds, mathematics continues to evolve. It is, it is interesting to note that their libraries are not as big as those of the other disciplines. What does the word mathematics mean? My friend, Arrigo Cohen, who just saw, a philologist, uh, he once told me, do you really know what mathematics were means? Well, I have an idea, but you are the expert. Please let me know. Uh, he is uh, already passed away and told me that mathema means scholarship. Mathemic, the infinitive of learning, the radical meant means in passive, science, knowledge. Then is the relative to learning. So in implicit sense, mathematics means what is worthy to be learned. That's what a little point told. Beautiful. There is no definition of what mathematics is. It is said to be a collection of ideas or techniques to solve problems that come from all disciplines, <coughs> including mathematics itself. Remember the last famous uh, fair math theorem, which follows the Pythagorean equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared, which states that the equation x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n never has positive integer solutions for any positive integer n greater than 2. Except for n equals 2, these equations do not have a geometric interpretation. Apparently, this problem does not seem to make much, however, it has had an, enorm an enormous influence in the development of mathematics. Fermat said that he had a proof, but had no space to write it. For over 300 years, this apparently simple problem has been the reason of great efforts of many mathematicians, and is precisely from these efforts that new techniques and concepts were created, which have influence in many areas of mathematics. The problem of the four colors says that only four colors are required to light or color any map of the globe with the condition that two adjacent countries should have different colors. The positive solution over a hundred years later was obtained by using the computer having a very small impact on mathematics. It was the first non-trivial problem solved by a computer. In mathematics, if, if a problem is solved by standard methods, the problem loses much of its interest. If it is not solved by methods known for a long time, it becomes a classical problem. A good problem is one that leads to new techniques with wide applications to other areas. The new ideas, which are the steps for the solution of a problem, constitute the progress in mathematics. Mathematicians know to appreciate the ingenious techniques. Actually, I do not like the word research myself, meaning to do a search again. I prefer to use for mathematics the verb to create. There are contrasting and alternative aspects in mathematical research. Here we see some. There, are different, there is a difference between pure mathematicians and applied mathematicians, uh, although there is also a relationship between the two. For pure mathematics, it is the alternative of the mathematical theory and problem solving. There are a variety of problems. If some of them can be solved by clever arguments in a similar way, then we say that we have a method to solve them, and if they are many, then we say 
that we have a mathematical theory. So it evolves from a collection of problems to a theory which differs from the concept that it has in other scientific disciplines. Mathematics is a human activity and therefore must be able to pass on to subsequent generations. So it is systematically organized in order that those who do, who do study it can do it in painlessly as possible. This is the basic form of what a mathematical theory is. Poincaré said that a house is made of bricks, but that the bricks themselves are far from being a house. Unlike other disciplines, uh, mathematics, the creation of new methods or techniques is called innovation, which is vital to the progress of mathematics. <coughs> it does not require the discovery of ancient, man ancient manuscripts, documents, or experimental work, or the introduction of new technology. That means you don't pick up a stone and say, oh, there's a theorem. I just discovered a theory. No, you have to create it. Innovation is given, among other things, by the creation of new techniques. For example, when Galois worked on the problem of the insolubility of the general polynomial equation of the Briatis 5, he did realize that the key was in the symmetries of the five solutions of the equation. This improvised the foundation of the general theory of symmetry which is one of the deepest, deepest branches on the whole spectrum of mathematics called group theory. There is also innovation when trying to bring cohesion to a mathematical theory, doing appropriate questions which require a lot of intuition and insight. Innovation can also, become, can also come from the progress of other disciplines. One can say that there is mathematical progress when there are continuous applications of usual methods dramatically interspersed with new concepts and problems. Let's see an example. What I will mention uh, in this example would not necessarily be understood by non-experts in the field, but the idea is to present a brief overview of algebraic K theory. How was it creation and border issues? Although since the early 20th century was well known that a commutative monoid, which is a set equipped with an associative law of composition with neutral element without zero divisors, could be considered within the commutative group it generates. And is that until 1957, when Alexander Rothenbeck thought of it, that K theory began. This is just the way that negative integers are defined from the additive monoid of natural numbers and that posit positive rational numbers are defined by the multiplicative monoid of naturals without zero. <coughs> the idea of Grothendieck was to associate to a commutative monoid M a commutative group K of M, unit up to isomorphism, and a canonical homomorphism of monoids phi from m to k of n defines such that for any commutative group g and defined monoid homomorphism f a unicorn factor f uh, from m to k of m and to g Grothendieck's group was uh, published for the first time in 1958 in a paper by Borel and Serre Apart from its use in the riemann drop theorem, one of the most well-known applications of the Grothendieck construction was realized in 1959 <coughs> by Atilla and Kirsten. They applied the construction to the additive monoid of the isomorphism classes of, of complex vector bundles with phase space a CW complex X. They used the notation K0 of X for Grothendieck's group they define k minus m of x using the suspension of x for n equal to 1. But periodicity shows that k n is isomorphic to k n plus 2 of x 
and was used to define a n of x for n an integer. These functors constitute a cohomology theory known as topological k theory, which had important applications, among others, as the Atika Sinker theorem and the solution of the problem of getting the maximum numbers of linearly independent vector fields on the sphere. One result of CERN, generalized by Swan in 1962, provided a way to translate topological concepts into algebraic concepts. In short, the category of vector bundles on X is equivalent to the category of projective finitely generated lambda modules, where lambda is the ring of complex functions in X. From here, one has a definition of K of lambda, or K0 of lambda, that makes sense for any ring lambda as the growth in the group of the category of lambda finitely generated projective models. So K0 of lambda is, among other things, a useful tool to investigate the structure of projective lambda models. In 1955, Sir proposed a conjecture which in algebraic terms said are all finitely generated projective models of the ring K to 1 n free. There are beautiful landscapes that led mathematicians to put this conjecture finally 20 years later, independently by Quillen and Suzlin. Attempts to solve the conjecture of Sir in the 60s, 60s gave birth to another mathematical area. The attempts erased a new area, algebraic behavior. On the goals of algebraic key theory was to provide, one of the goals was to provide techniques and ideas to tackle the problem of CERN. Although the final solution of the conjecture in the affirmative way did not depend on algebraic key theory. It does not diminish the great influence it had on the enormous development that has been reached more significantly than expected. In 1964, uh, Hyman Bass, which uh, you might remember as president of the American Mathematical Society in uh, 2001, 2002, and who attended my invitation to chair the opening of the fifth joint meeting between the AMS and the Mexican Mathematical Society in 2001 in Morelia, when I was president of the same, defined the factor K1 using the dictionary that relates algebraic to topological concepts. It turned out that these groups were the same as those introduced by White. So we have that K1 of lambda equals the general linear group of lambda modulo its commutator. And by the results of homology of groups, K1 of lambda equals the integral homology of GL lambda that is H1 of G lambda with integral coefficients. In 1950, Quine considered the group K1 <coughs> of G, where ZG denotes the integral group ring of the fundamental group G of self-complexes, which had topological applications. There are result related to this is the famous S coverism theorem. There were several important results in the 60s taking the point of view of algebraic theory among others, the finite generation of K1 as a G and the stability results for the solution of the congruence subgroup problem in 1967 by Bass, Miller, and Serre for SLM lambda, with lambda giving us integers in another field. The lecture set the stage for an arithmetic issue in algebraic theory, which has become one of its most important aspects. During the 60s, late 60s, one of the major problems was to define factors Kn of lambda for any integers. This problem was suggested by analogy with topological K theory. In 1969, Milner defined K2 of lambda, considering the infinite the elementary group E of lambda generated by the elementary matrices E 
IG lambda, among which are valid certain relations. Miller defined this Tanger group as being lambda as the group with generators x, i, j, lambda, so <coughs> these relations, and defines k2 in a very strange four way. The kernel of the epimorphism from S T lambda to E lambda. In 1970, Kerber proved that this Tanger group is the universal central station of E lambda. And therefore, K2 lambda can be described as a sure, sure multiplier of the perfect group E lambda. In other words, K2 of lambda equals the homology K of E lambda with integral coefficients. K2 of lambda is extremely difficult to calculate. In 1969, Matsumoto calculated K2 of the field describing it by means of generators and relations that uh, were used by Bass and Tate to describe K2 of numerical fields. Quillen defined in the 70s for i bigger than equal to 1 the i algebra k group of lambda, that is ki of lambda, defined as, as the pi, the, the homotopy group of the classifying space of GL lambda plus, plus is the plus constructions defined by Quillen. As in the cases i equals 1 or 2, k1 is a comparative functor from the category of rings to the category of groups. One of the marks of significant progress in mathematics is the discovery of unexpected relationships between different areas. Perhaps one of the most notable examples of such development is the development of Williams algebraic theory, in which algebra <coughs> and topology are related in a new and fundamental way. On one side, algebraic theory introduced topological methods to define algebraic invariants, such as the higher k groups of rings, and on the other hand, it provides a way to translate algebraic concepts into topological concepts. Algebraic theory studies the properties of the groups k, i, and lambda constructed from a ring lambda. One of the most important problems in algebraic K theory is the calculation of the Ki groups for the various rings lambda. But despite the efforts of outstanding mathematicians as Bass, Milo, Karubi, Quillen, Weibel, Bode, Zule, Snape, only a very small number of them is known. Here are some. Bass showed in 1968 that K1 of the integers is isomorphic to the integers mod 2, and K1 of the integers mod p squared is the direct sum of z plus z mod p minus 1, p a prime number different than 2. Milner showed in 1971 that K2 is isomorphic to z mod 2, and that K2 of z mod p squared equals 0 for a prime p different than 2. And in 1972, William calculated the algebraic K theory of a finite field, and probably is the only complete calculation being done to the present. Lee and Sharp have found in 1976 that K theory of Z is Z148. They let R be the ring of the integers of a number field and I a non trivial ideal. Calculating Ki of R of I for finite rings is an open problem for i bigger than equal to 3. Partial results have been obtained by evidence with Lander, by Aisbeck, myself, Snape, and Soule. And interestingly, since 1980, <coughs> there has not been virtually any complete calculation of this problem, making it a very interesting one, no? as I mentioned earlier. In my memoir of the American Mathematical Society, along with some of my other papers, K3 of the dual numbers and of the integers of n appear calculated. I also have a funny panoramic book on higher algebraic K theory that you might read if you are interested. Here are some of my other books on classical algebraic K theory, and uh, I will not talk about numbers or Locke's uh, k plus conjecture, but only say that several Fields medals have been 
uh, is told to distinguish famous mathematicians that work in algebraic case theory. Well, as I have said on many occasions, <coughs> mathematics is a fine art, and a science. For mathematicians, beauty and truth have equal esteem. We have much appreciation for a beautiful argument that is an argument of fairness, elegance of style, economy of effort, clarity of thought, perfections in detail, and in how to achieve a possible and convincing relation. Mathematicians are dedicated to one area or another depending on how beautiful he we think it is relative to the other one in the world. We look for elegant methods and avoid ugly arguments. There are several aesthetic characteristics of mathematics. Universality, meaning that almost any branch of knowledge that, uh, has aspects that can be analyzed mathematically. The development of simple and concise arguments are absolutely essential for the progress of mathematics. The selection and formulation of a problem is an art that relies on mathematical intuition. Here, aesthetic aspects play an important role. Poincaré writes in the early 20th century that the mathematical proof is not a simple juxtaposition of syllogism but syllabus placed in a certain order that the order in which they are placed is much more important than syllabisms alone. He says he is not afraid that any of them will be forgotten because each of them will take place in a settlement without <coughs> He also described the creation process. First, conscious work is done about the problem, this from variety um, consciously. Then, what leads the ideas to mature in this conscious? So, from goes to to uh, stone. Uh, he was a geologist, no? hammering stones in, the, in this picture. Third. When he is going up or down uh, a can, there the ah, I got this happy full uh, idea. Well, uh, he finally approved the idea, and then he goes back to his desk to write the answer. So this this is uh, 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 this is uh, a thing that one can represent in a congress of psychology in 1913. And it is so interesting because one of the things has changed now, but you can analyze this is exactly the same way that music is created. You can imagine Beethoven sitting in his piano, I'm going to be very exaggerated, what should I do with two notes to key? And then Beethoven goes instead of uh, hammering stones, he goes to walk with a hand, with his hands behind walking in Vienna woods. And in, this, in the third one, Beethoven says, oh, now I know what to do with, with two notes, no? Yeah, and he sits in his piano again and says, oh, the motive of this should be the G three times and the E uh, flat one time. Da, 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 da. Ah, that's a great motive to create a symphony. So, and you see music is done in a very similar way. You have a motive <coughs> and what to do with the motive. If you do something interesting and intelligent, you have music, art music. Otherwise, you just have a note. And Beethoven and mathematicians know what to do with the note. It's the same process of creation. As I have said, uh, there are several... Uh, well, uh, uh, as a joke, it seems that from current creative mathematics are getting on or off a tram. Hadamard is recommended, recommended to have two hot baths to stimulate mathematical research. Many mathematicians drink coffee, transforming, transforming it into theories. I have also heard that mathematics is creative walking. That is when the ideas are in the unconscious. 
and suddenly the bright idea jumps up, which is perhaps a series of neural connections that take place over time, which they are best achieved when a conscious act is not strongly involved that presents them to arise. Regarding the transmission of mathematics, <coughs> it is done after a period of time since, since it was created, due to reasons explained above, at levels of younger people. <coughs> Very difficult mathematics have been compacted and elegantly presented, facilitated its learning. This is the most effective way to transmit mathematics. <coughs> Thus, there are various types of mathematical creation and mathematicians all indispensable. The activity uh, in which mathematics has applications outside their own field is called applied mathematics. <coughs> applied mathematics is automatically multidisciplinary and ideally and probably should be done by someone whose primary interest is not mathematics. However, we found it is less difficult for a mathematician to go into other disciplines than the opposite. This is a great advantage for mathematics students. Pay attention to that. Let's mention uh, an application of this. Uh, mathematical music theory. Currently, it is noticeable, noticeable that there was a big trend in the last three decades in mathematics to realize not only applications, but to do <coughs> mathematics in a variety of fields of knowledge. And the field of music has not been the exception. Although, this happened in music <coughs> from the time of Pythagoras. Since Pythagoras, mathematics has been there. Why didn't you do too much before? Because there were not enough probably in mathematics to interpret the musical phenomena. Remember that the word musicology is, adopted, uh, is the adopted name of the French musicology to refer to the scholarly study of music. Also, as you know from German language, music with a chart means science of music. To do, to do with musicology is not easy. Musicology lacks a stable framework. It is said to be difficult, to be very difficult to start making musicology and navigate over a secure framework. I want to mention one of the most interesting projects currently being developed in this field. I refer to um, uh, I refer to the mathematical music theory uh, by worrying of not so. It is largely, largely unknown the application of mathematical concepts to musicology and in particular mathematical music theory. It began more than three decades ago. One of the main goals of mathematical music theory is to develop a scientific framework, framework for musicology. This framework work has, uh, as foundation, established scientific fields. It includes a formal language of objects and musical and musicological relations. Here is Corino Marzola and myself. Where 1987 I still had dark hair. <laughs> Some time ago. Music is rooted in physical psychological and semiotic realities, but the formal description of musical instances correspond to the mathematical formalism. It is based on the theory of groups, modules and categories, in algebraic topology and combinatorics, in algebraic geometry, representation theory, that is high-level mathematics. Its purpose purpose is to describe musical structures. The philosophy behind it is to understand the aspects of music, music that are related to reason in the same way that physics do with the natural phenomena in a scientific way. This theory is based 
in language suited or musical structures, subject and conditions um, defined and from functionality for the composition and analysis with or without computer. It has a set of postulates and theorems about musical <coughs> structures. Mazzola, in a magnificent panoramic article called Towards Big Science, cites Pierre Boulet, elements of a program from the 60s, where Pierre Boulet intends that the arts and science are reconciled. I could aggregate and we say that artists and scientists reconcile. Mazzola continues, music is a central creation of life and human thought. Acting, acting on another layer of reality and physics. We believe that the attempt to understand or to compose a measured work in music is as important and difficult as the attempt to unify gravity, electromagnetism, the weak and strong forces. Surely the ambitions are comparable and therefore the tools should be comparable. In the 80s, the Mazzola observed that global music structures are held together with local data structures. These are the concepts studied in what is now called classical mathematical music theory. Later in the 90s, Mazzola mentioned three major paradigms of mathematics and musicology that have occurred during the last 150 years that have been parallel in the evolution of both and the growing presence of mathematics in music. There are the global structures, symmetries, and the philosophy of Jomera. The first one means in words that the locally trivial structures can be put together in aesthetic configurations valid if they are viewed in a non-trivial way. The second, the symmetries and fractals are used in composition also, they appear in nature and in mathematics play a crucial role as well as in physics. As for the third, the philosophy of Jomela, in words say that to understand an object, go around of it. This means understanding by changing perspectives. In mathematics, this Jomela dilemma has important applications in homological algebra, in algebraic topology, and in algebraic geometry, just to name a few. It says that a mathematical <coughs> object can, uh, can be classified by its functor up to isomorphism. In music, the score is the first glance and with all its interpretation constitutes its identity. What a wonderful point of view for both performers and audiences. It leaves aside the sterile competition in art and in music as if they were Olympic Games. Classification means the task, task of fully understanding an object. This is the dilemma of Jomera in its full philosophical implications. Understanding art means synthesizing all their interpretative perspectives. Fifty years ago, uh, Guerrero Mazzola, in his article, Status Quo of Osmi, 2000, which we very <coughs> much appreciated it was presented to the world in Mexico in a splendid plenary exposition in Saltillo, in the Congress of the Mathematical Society of Mexico, explains why the approach by a genetic theoretical model of that time developed into a framework, point framework that is appropriate for many musical problems. This new frame, framework is based on more sophisticated mathematics such as category and topos theory. Within this area, high-level mathematics is carried out not just applications, that is, new mathematics is created and mathematical results are tested within the defined objects. One of the main purposes of mathematical music theory is to establish a stable framework defining the concepts in a precise way. The word gesture means hand movement or of other parts of the body or face in which various affections of the mind are expressed. 
musical performance can be defined as the transformations of the mental level of the score, of the score into the set of sound events. <coughs> the musical performance consists of the score, possibly its analysis, the thought of the symbols of the score to gestures that are then transformed into sounds by the instrument. This concept excludes all types of musical execution, not because they are not important, but because the chosen type of this perspective has undergone the most intense and elaborate scientific research. The throwing of the score to gestures that act on the instrument interface and generate sounds play an important role. But this is still a not, not a relevant issue, unfortunately, in performance theory. Just the transformation P at the time of the score to the sounds is. As a commentary, note that there is also the reverse process of freezing the gestures ending with the modern abstract musical notation. Musical performance theory and its practice does not focus on P, it focuses on the research and understanding of the structures that are behind. In the research of the theory of musical performance, what is behind is called expressive playing. These concepts, somewhat, somewhat ambiguous, refer to the communication process leading to P. As such, it starts from the creative side of the composer and performer and addresses the audience and the analyst. This is mediated by acoustic and gestural performance of music. Eight years ago, in 2007, 2007 Matsola presents a new categorical programmatically oriented framework for describing the relationship between music and mathematical activities. This relationship can be described in terms of adjoint functors, which extend the functorial representations described in his fundamental book of uh, 2002 called The Topos of Music, in which Harald and myself are contributors. Therefore, in a meta level, relations between music and mathematical activities are investigated from a mathematical point of view. Far from being isomorphic, music and mathematics seem to have some structures that can be related by one of the most powerful concepts of category theory, the concept of adjoint functor. You can see my book in Topological Algebra if you are interested in the definition of adjoint functors. This construction proposed by Daniel Kahn in 1958 as a technical device for the study of combinatorial properties in homotopy theory turns out to be the most appropriate tool to link three main categories equations or formulas, category spectroids, diagram schemes, <coughs> and directed graphs category, and gestures, category of diagrams of curves in topological spaces. The category of deep graphs or directed graphs, which has recently been proposed as a foundational concept of mathematics for both classical and categorical set theory, seems to provide a musically interesting mediating structure between the, the other two categories, on which music and mathematics act in a joint position. Through um, diagrams, mathematics uh, turn gesture into formulas, and in fact a diagram is a system or transformation of arrows. In such a system one can follow different paths or structures starting, starting and ending at the same two points. This path can be seen as gesture. If two such paths commute, that is, they produce the same composite transformation, then we have exactly what is called a formula or equation. Two expressions give the same result. Very generally speaking, uh, the formulas are commutative relations of gestures of paths of trajectories. Music, uh, conversely, the musical activity thoughts uh, formulas and make them 
uh, gestures that can be described as formula developed in space. Uh, this frame pictures the books, the books that Marino Mazzola has created and uh, it has the words of President Peter Grotten somewhere saying that, uh, let's see if I, aha, in a private uh, letter with Guarino and Alexander Grotten, uh, he called, this is probably the mathematics of the new era. And uh, Mazzola uses, well, here are the books. Uh, Mazzola uses uh, the category of directed graphs, graphs of cubes in topological spaces as the theoretical framework for gesture theory. From a purely theoretical aspect, gestures and gestures of gestures, or of gestures, and natural gestures are canonically defined, as discussed by exemplifying the case of a gesture of a figure of a pianist uh, uh, in a hypergesture generalization. In the case, it's very common later, as in the case of the development of category theory, <coughs> theory as McLean did, the notion of gesture as suggested in the work of Masola, offers a good example of a collision between algebraic and topological methods. Whether I talk about algebraic theory, same thing. Masola's and Andretta's paper of uh, 2007 suggests that the mathematical structuralism could be taken as a philosophical position for theoretical musical activity once it is accepted that mathematical music theory deals with music and as a structural system. Then it is shown in this paper, I'm showing uh, the portrait, uh, that the space of gestures in a topological space is a topological space. Therefore, iteration construction of gestures is possible and naturally leads to the notion of, of hyper gestures. I suggestion to realize the homotopies between continuous curves. Um, well, mathematically, a gesture is defined as a graph or directed graph B called the skeleton of uh, the gesture. It is also required that a transformation G that associates with each arrow A or T a continuous curve G of A from I to X, where I is the unit interval of real numbers so that the arrows <coughs> correspond both to continuous curves that correspond. The system of this, of this is called the, the body of the gesture. You can see here a graph of that. And the skeleton, the body. And in the example, uh, X is the coordinate space in the, for the positions of the tips of fingers of a pianist in a given key each, a level above the key position and the time in the event. Most, one of the most obvious expressions gesture is the movement of the body of a music performer. For example, it is easy to recognize the gestural power of pianists. It is logical that one must therefore try to model the gestures of musicians. In collaboration with his PhD student Stefan Müller, Mazzola modeled in 2001-2003 uh, in the movements of a pianist's hand at the level of computer graphics and the idea was not only to model the hand movements but also implement software that will transform the abstract symbols of the score in hand movements that were suitable for the interpretation of music on a piano keyboard. Uh, the most... Um, let's see, I'm going to... Show you that's a picture of a hyper gesture, be a loop of loops. And now you can, uh, I will tell you that you can read Masola's papers here shown, and from which I have taken some of the concepts in order to motivate you in this fascinating subject. In them, you will see the mathematics concepts he uses, for example 
you, you can see that the word singular homology on campus just, just appear. And again, let me recommend you to read the recent book by Wari and Sola called Musical Performance for those who want to venture into this fascinating field where I also took some passages to pro provide you as motivation for this topic. Let me say that I dedicated myself in the late 70s and today to homotopy theory and cohomology theory. That is to algebraic topology. I am an, I am an algebraic topologist. To homological algebra, the cohomology of groups. These mathematics were considered pure mathematics in, in the 70s. Immaculate, <coughs> completely immaculate mathematics. But over 30 years later, those mathematics turned into applied mathematics. But with an extra. Not only applications, but you can do new mathematics there. All this happened in my other field of function, which is music. This is, for me, the surprising story of my mathematical life. I never thought that in the 70s I could work all of this uh, pure mathematics, 30 years later applied to Music. That is amazing, completely. The mathematical music theory of Guarino Mazzola is the most interesting project currently being developed in this field. Music is a central creation of life and human thought. Mathematics provides the scientific basis for understanding music and musicology. We are currently experiencing a radical change in musicology as one as the one experienced in physics about 500 years ago. This is a wonderful moment for musicology. And let me mention the following extraordinary, well written articles by Carl Some of them, I have used them for my own students to work with their thesis. They are not only very interesting on the intelligent ways of enumerating and counting what Carl realized, but also the clarity, excellence and elegance in the exposition of, of his astonishing results. Last year Carl offered us a stupendous lecture at our International Music and Mathematics Congress in Vallarta, Mexico. Thank you, Harald, for setting a high-level mark in the writing of mathematical creativity in our field. Congratulations on at least your first third of your life. <laughs> by the way, these are other papers by Harald. Tiny problems in music theory, <coughs> classification of motives, a mathematical approach, Tom Rose, by the way, during the International Congress, I mentioned, it was announced that the next Mathematics and Computation in Music Congress, MCM 2017, will take place, which, had, which takes place every two years, will take place in Mexico City at UNAM. This, that is the place exactly where the Congress will take place. Uh, and it's a place where I work. Faculty of Science at UNA. You are most welcome to assist. Um, Sir James Joseph Sylvester wrote in 1864 May not music be described as the mathematics of sense, mathematics as music of the reason, the soul of each the same? Both are created, we can appreciate and enjoy it. An advantage or disadvantage, as you want to see, is that for mathematics there is no musical instrument where you can play it. It remains at the level of score. You might say 
it goes directly from brain to brain. For me, the most important relationship, relationship between mathematics and music is that both are fine arts. They possess similar characteristics. They are related in the sense that mathematics provides, provides the scientific basis for understanding music and musicology, and that later can be considered more a science. Finally, I express uh, again that mathematics is one of the fine arts, the purest of them, who has the gift of being the most precise and the precision of science. Thank you very much for your attention.